Right, Lions team for 2021. This has been one of the most requested videos recently, given we are in lockdown. I have gone and picked a 23-man squad to head over to South Africa. Uh, interestingly, I also picked a second 15, which I think is maybe a bit more fun, but I'll do that separately. I'll get with my first 15 uh, this time and you guys can let me know your thoughts um, yeah I've done it mostly on gut but I did look up some stats as well so um, yeah I'm definitely open to to feedback and do let me know you your guys picks like who, who you would have had because there's always some beauties uh, that I see in the comments whenever I do any of these kind of like speculative pick teams but let us get started start with the front row good place to start uh loose head i'm gonna go muckle vunipola uh hooker i'm gonna go jamie george and uh, tight head i'm gonna go tyg furlong um Mako, when he's fit you got him as one of the best loose heads in the world uh so has joe marla been to be fair england have been pretty blessed in that um that area of the game but who knows if he's going to be available for the Lions. So I've gone with Mako. If he's fit, I think he's he's kind of a must-have. Uh, Jamie George kind of snuck up on us, at least maybe just me. Um, like he was kind of the second guy for quite some time, but he's just quietly become one of the better hookers in world rugby. The line-out accuracy is there. The work rate's there, and he, he can play quite a few minutes as well when needs be. So... Um, yeah, I got no qualms putting him in there at the two jersey and Tyke Furlong. I feel like he, like a couple of years ago, he never got nominated, but he would have been up there as one of the best players in the world. They never nominate props for like World Player of the Year, but there was a year when he probably could have been up there, and then he fell off the pace a bit. Maybe just didn't kind of match that same form that he was in. But I think, even though maybe Ireland didn't have their best. Um, you know, time at the Rugby World Cup, and you know, after that very successful year uh, in 2018, it was 2019. They kind of you know didn't perform up to those same levels. I think he was he was kind of tracking pretty well. Ball carrying was good, more more dominant, like we're used to seeing from him. And uh, you know, the scrummaging was improved as well. So he must have been back on the potatoes. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy to put him in there at three. So two Englishmen and Irishmen in the front row. For the reserve front row, as I've gone with Ken Owens, I think in terms of a dynamic hooker who's going to add impact off the bench, he is your good guy. And I mean, you could start him just as well, but I feel like he probably is going to add more punch than some other guys from the bench. Uh, I've gone with um, Sutherland from Scotland for my reserve loose head, and I think him at scrum time, like he, you could argue him to be the starter as well. I think he was probably the standout loose head from the Six Nations. And Kyle Sinclair as uh, the reserve tight head. The guy could play 10 with those hands of his. And to be fair, if you wanted to go with an all-English front row, you could just start him and put Furlong on the bench. But either way works for me. Second row. And I think this is another area where the Lions are going to be pretty, uh, pretty deep on talent. But that's a good thing because so are the Springboks. The Springboks are one nation that has, you know, probably the most locking depth in the world with the likes of Etzebeth, with Moster, with Sneeman, with Diaka, you know, they've got four guys who would start in most teams and they're kind of all battling it out for that first uh, couple of starting spots. I've gone with Maro Itoje to to start alongside Alan Wynne jones and I think if you play Alan Wynne jones as a starter, you make him captain uh, of the side. I don't know, I mean, there's, there's other guys who you could have captaining the side, but I'm not sure that everyone has quite got that nous that, that Ellen Wynn has. I mean, part of that's experience. Part of that's just his composure. And I think in a Lions series, that's going to be vital. That you've got somebody who's able to have a word with the ref and influence quietly. Um, you know, but also have that massive work rate. The guy's getting on. But he's still, he's still got a lot of gas in the tank. And he's one of those guys who just... Is, is really busy uh, all game long. Uh, Mauro Toje, I mean, you just look at his numbers from the Six Nations. Dominant tackles. He's the number one guy. Uh, he's got good line-out stats. He's got great turnovers. The guy is immense. 
Uh, I know he's one of those guys who's um, not the most likable at times, but um, I think you can't argue with the results on the pitch. And I'd put James Ryan on the bench. Again, he's like Alan Wynn in terms of his work rate. He has more carries virtually than any other lock uh, in world rugby. Tackles like a demon as well. So, um, again, you could start Ryan, but, like, you're blessed, honestly. You've got three world-class guys right there uh, in that second row. Uh, back row was one of the toughest picks for me. I've gone with Courtney Laws on the blind side. I've gone with Hamish Watson on the open side. And I've put Billy Vunipola uh, at number eight. Now, we're still a year out. So, again, I'm assuming all these guys are fit. Um, Laws, again, kind of like Etoje, he's fantastic with the dominant tackles. That's just a thing of his. Uh, his lineup numbers are also really good. If you're going to have a loose forward uh, who could add something at lineup time, that just gives you another option. And I think against the Springboks, you want as many lineup options as you can get. And his run meters are also well up there. So that's one area that Atoje hasn't kind of um, had his best year in terms of his numbers with the Six Nations. But Laws has been good. For the open side, I was kind of tossing it up between three guys. It was either going to be Watson, Curry, or, um, or Tipperick. But uh, I ended up going with uh, with Watson, basically on stats. That's the only thing I could justify picking it. He's got great turnovers, great tackles, uh, dynamic ball carrier. Him and Curry have got very similar stats. But the ones that I looked at, the kind of key stat areas that you want in a good open side, uh, I think Watson just edged it. But I have put Curry on the bench. He can basically cover the whole back row as well. His breakdown works phenomenal. Uh, he's a dynamic ball carrier as well. So he gets it. Like he doesn't seem like the biggest guy, but man, he, he carries really well. So part of that's just his natural athleticism, I guess. Uh, and Billy V at number eight. Again, you want a number eight who's going to bust tackles. You want a number eight who, if you've got a, a scrum, which is five meters out, you want the opposition to question, are they going to really go full bore and try to, to scrum over the line? Or are they going to release Billy V from the back? So you've got the, the flankers of the opposition in two minds as to whether they need to be pushing or looking out to tackle Billy. Because if he's going to go one-on-one -on -one with a number nine, he's probably going to go over the line. So, yeah, if he's fit, he's not got a broken arm, if he's got some good luck, knock on wood, um, yep, he is going to be phenomenal at number eight. So, yeah, that's the Fords. That is the Fords. Pretty happy with it, but... Again, I picked an alternative team, which I'm uh, probably, maybe even a bit more excited to see play. But anyway, we'll get on to the backs. Um, for the backs, number nine, I've gone with Gareth Davis, and I've put Connor Murray on the bench. I don't know, man. Uh, Murray, if you again, if you're picking on 2018, he's probably the best nine in the world. Um, but like a few of the Irish guys, maybe he's fallen off the pace a bit. Again, he was probably rekindling a bit of that last year. Um, but still not quite sure if he's there yet. If you want to play kind of a tactical kicking game, then you probably start Murray and go with Gareth Davis for the impact off the bench because he does provide that. But I did want a little bit of a live wire to keep the defenders in two minds from number nine. And I think Davis, as you guys, distribution skills are there. For number 10, I've gone with Owen Farrell. The goal kicking, he's incredibly accurate. Uh, he can cover 12. Um, he's a pretty big fella in terms of putting him in there at that 10 jersey. He's not going to be, uh, you know, in two minds if he's got someone like Damien Dalende or, you know, Andre Esterhazen or someone like some big number 12 uh, carrying the ball at him. Tackle technique, admittedly, has a, a wee bit to be desired. But, um, yeah, I think you put him there at number 10. But like I said, I still think you keep Alan Wynn as captain uh, rather than Farrell. Uh, I did manage to squeeze in Dan Bigger on the bench. Uh, it was a real toss-up between which guy you put in at 10, to be fair. Uh, but I think we've seen with Bigger, in terms of what he's done, when him and Anskin were kind of battling it out for that 10 jersey with Wales, that Bigger is a guy who's got a proven track record of adding value from the bench. Like, not every player is used to playing on the bench. Dan Bigger has done it a bit and shown that when he does come on, he adds something to the game. It's like... He's just smart. He watches the game and maybe sees opportunities uh, from the bench. And then when he comes on, he's able to put it into action. Uh, midfielders, 
I've gone with Manu Tuilangi at 12, and I've gone with Jonathan Davis at 13. Again, assuming these guys are fit, I'm picking a fair few guys who've got not the, the greatest injury track records. Uh, Tuilangi, again, in terms of his tackle busts, he is just one of the most dangerous guys, kind of like Billy V. The, he's going to put defenders into mind. Even if you use him as a dummy runner, he's going to have guys questioning the, the line that they're, they're, um, they're defending. Jonathan Davis with that fender his, and probably just the most all-round, uh, one of the most all-round midfielders in the world. His game is pretty much complete. Some people say his kicking is not up to scratch compared to some other midfielders, but man, uh, I didn't have to think too long about putting him in there at 13. And then the outside backs, I've gone with uh, Josh Adams on the left wing. I've gone with Stuart Hogg at 15, and I've gone with Liam Williams on the right wing. Initially, I had Liam Williams at fullback, because I do love him at fullback. Uh, but I thought, if you're going up against the Springboks, you want your back three to be very, very secure at taking kicks. And... Hogg and Williams, I mean, Adams is no slouch as well, but again, essentially two full backs. You've got the back probably pretty well covered. Adams is a legit, just game-breaking winger, and you can see that with his try stats at the World Cup in the Six Nations before he got injured, but he is just going to score tries, and he can also cover the midfield, I guess, if you need. Uh, Hogg... Arguably one of the best fullbacks in the world. And uh, when he's not dropping the ball over the line like that game in the Six Nations, uh, he doesn't do a lot wrong. Very dangerous with ball in hand. Good boot. And Liam Williams, his skills in the air are pretty much unrivaled these days, man. He is just the most secure player under the high ball. And he is an elusive runner. Kind of reminds me of Ben Smith. And they don't seem to be doing that much. But they're really... Both very hard guys to tackle. So Liam Williams, I think, keeps you pretty secure. And then I put Elliot Daly on the bench. He can cover, I think, a fair few positions in the back line. It's good to have some guys that are versatile, like Farrell. Like Tuilangi can cover 13 if needs be. Adams could move if needs be. Williams is flexible. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of that. But I think, for the most part, playing guys uh, in their position. So, yeah. That's the team to take on the box for mine. Uh, very tough in some areas. Some guys, I think, really put their hands up as clear first picks, but there's a lot of guys you could argue um, deserve a better pick. You could say I've been a bit like unbalanced in terms of the countries, but I didn't try to think about countries. I just tried to pick guys that I would want to see playing. Um, yeah. So pretty happy with it, to be fair. I mean, it's England heavy, I guess. I haven't actually counted the numbers, but I mean, England were doing the best of uh, of these nations in terms of their Six Nations results. Um, Wales weren't having their best year. Again, Ireland, it's hard to say because Ireland and Wales have both got new coaches. Um, anyway, that's the team. You guys let me know your thoughts. I will release a second team. I've only picked a 15 for the second team but maybe a team that i might like to see play a bit more than that team but um yeah we can compare them a bit later on uh, i've picked in the second team none of the guys from that team so it's it's a it's a complete fresh team but um yeah you guys let me know your thoughts do let me know your 15 or 23 as well because as i said there's always a few gems uh in the comments when uh when guys put their ones down but um yeah you guys let me know your thoughts and talk to you again soon see you later